So all of this is, is important because what this kind of circuitous route did for me is it taught me a lot about how to um, transition, how to think about different careers and professions, how to think about brands in a way that I'm not sure that I would have had otherwise. So I mean, first of all, the idea that um, you know, any career is static is so outdated, it's, it's not even funny. And I think I was a little bit ahead of the curve in that one because I transitioned so many times. But I think many of you in this room will understand what I'm saying and that everything that you do in your life professionally and otherwise can add to who you are and can make your, your professional opportunities that much more robust if you're open to the possibility. You know, if you are a curious person and if, you're, if you can take everything that you've learned and let it inform you, and inform what you do next, your opportunities will be that much more robust. I mean, now I actually know how to do financial projections because of the time that I spent on Wall Street. You know, I know how to, um, you know, contact, you know, designers to figure out, you know, if we can pull that exclusive gown for our next cover subject because I spent time in the fashion industry. Um, you know, the digital technology is obvious. That's helping me on a daily basis. But just everything is informing who I am and and um, and what I know professionally. And then from a personal perspective, I mean, obviously, if you're going to go through these kinds of transitions, you've got to, you know, just bust your ass. I mean, that's you know sort of a, a given. But I'm going to just say it because I think it's important to say that as you are going through your career. I'm now I'm kind of big sissing some of you. Um, but as you're going through your career, and especially if some of you are interested in making a transition from one career to another. It's just so critically important to kill your present job, just kill what you're doing right now, really, really do a great job, and then do the next thing. So you can't kind of leave before you leave. You know, you've got to really excel at what it is that you're doing, and then you know, then you can get the additional responsibility. So this is just a, a slight, this is a separate talk, I know. Okay, I'll come back and I'll do the whole career talk another time, but that's so, so critically important. You know, it also kind of teaches you what I've sort of done teaches you to build relationships before you need them, um, another critically important thing. You know, just really think about who it is strategically you might need to know and you know, how you want to get to where you're going and, and establish those relationships before you need to call them for something. You know, really, you guys, that's so, so important. Just try to get something going, you know, before, before it's, it's life or death. Um, all of these things help me at Ebony, which I will get to in a second. Um, and then the other thing, you know, that I, I really kind of learned was how people think about me. You know, the, the, you know how my self perception might differ from the way others view me, and that's 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 you know very real because that keys into um, your personal brand. You know, so many of us, you know, we have an idea of who we are. We are, you know, I am hardworking, and I am, you know, funny, and I am stylish, and I am. You know, accomplish. You know, you just you have like your own little self perception, and then you talk to somebody else, or somebody else, you know, will give you their very real perception of you, and they're like, yeah, you're kind of arrogant, you know, <laughs> you're a little shrill, you know, you're, 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 you're just the the way that people perceive you is often very different from how you perceive yourself. Not necessarily negatively; it could be more positive. You know, whatever it is, there's always some kind of a gap, or, you know, some kind of a schism, and so. Thinking about how it is that you want to be perceived as you're going through your career, especially in media, is is key and crucial because so much of media is about um, you know branding and perception and shaping content and shaping mm -hmm. ideas. And it has to start with yourself. You have to know how to shape your own brand and your own identity before you can shape anything else. And so for me, transitioning through all these careers help me think a lot about how I want to be perceived versus how I think I'm perceived, um, and also how I want to shape um, you know, my personal brand. I couldn't shake my, my thinking about the brand. You know, I couldn't shake the idea of, um, of Ebony as having so much brand goodwill and brand equity that anything was possible using it as the base of a platform. I mean, in addition to the fact I think some of you in here are, are somewhere within my target market, um, but many of you are not. Um, but Ebony, just you know, as an FYI, um, you know, is um, an iconic cultural institution in the African American community. I mean, it is the oldest and the largest African American magazine in the country. It is the magazine of record for Black people, which is kind of a big, big honking deal, really. Um, and so. 
it was very rare in your career that you get the opportunity to touch an iconic brand. I mean, just to, to touch it is just such a big deal. If any of you guys love media the way I do, just thinking about your big, your favorite big iconic brands, just getting to touch them, you know, is just so exciting. And I was given the, being given the opportunity to remake this iconic brand, and I just, I, I couldn't obviously turn it down. Here I am. Um, but it wasn't just about sort of touching the icon, it was about the idea of brand equity. Because what I really believe is that strong brands are, um, are the future of, of print media. I think strong brands are the future of media in general, which we can get to, but certainly of print media. You know, I, really, um, I really believe that eventually, you know, magazines might become lost leaders. You know, they might not be the most profitable piece of a media empire, but it will be the thing that translates the mission and the message of a brand most clearly. And then around that, you can build all of these ancillary opportunities for revenue, all of these other brand extensions. You can extend the brand across media platforms, and that really is the future. But it was really, for me, more of a branding exercise at first. It was like, let me rethink what the pillars are of this iconic brand. This is what it's represented over the years. OK, fine. But what can it represent for a new audience? What can this be? You know, can it be the same things? Can it be some of the same things with some new things? Can I, you know, can I, can I address the same topics? What can I do to make this important and relevant you know, so that the next generation of people actually thinks about picking this up? Um, so what I really kind of you know thought about was Ebony not just as um, a media brand, but as a lifestyle, you know, as a um, as sort of aspirational example of what my readers might hope to achieve in their lives and for their community. Ebony is a, in a very unique position to bridge the gap between present and past. There's no other. Um, media brand in the African American space that has the same um, kind of historical relevancy as well as authority and ability to reflect what's happening in, in black culture right now. It, it just really doesn't exist in the same way that, that um, it does with Ebony. What I really think is important as you're, as you're looking at various media platforms, as you're thinking about which media platform to focus on, as you're a consumer, just looking at you know, what you're gonna, where you're going to go for your information or to be entertained or engaged, to think about what each platform can do best and, and focus on that. At the same time, being able to integrate um, kind of in an organic way, you know, just the videos. You know, so just you know, inserting like a little play button, you know, on something and, and having it sort of look like a magazine format, but then you know, enabling you to like go in and, and have a three-dimensional experience. That is taking one a aspect of that platform and using it in a way that no other platform can really do. I am um, working as the face of the brand, um, not just on the pages of the magazine, but also on the website and in social media. Like I have to think about every aspect of how we are representing this brand and sort of get comfortable with the idea that I'm a huge part of that. People want a personal message. You know, they want um, to hear from um, a person. You know, they want a relationship. I mean, it's interesting. There's this kind of mass exclusivity of communication, which dictates not the case, but, but which sort of seems to mean that um, you want this big, broad conversation. You want to follow people that have six million you know, followers on Twitter. At the same time, you want to hear their words. You, know, you want intimate details, but you want to have it across millions of, of, of voices. I mean, it's, it's, it's very dichotomous. It's really you know, contradictory, and yet this is the world that we live in right now. And so um, I'm very conscious of that, you know, as the, the editor in chief of the magazine. So I'm I'm thinking about okay, well, I need to make sure that I'm always interacting with Ebony readers as much as possible, so that everyone knows that there is an actual person behind this. There's a living, breathing human behind this, you know, who is thinking about you and thinking about the magazine, and who wants information and suggestions and questions and comments. And I get a ton. I mean, it's a very useful. Um, uh, uh, exercise for me because not only do I get to have conversations with readers you know, or and users, and I get to you know just sort of put out my opinions, um, you know, and do them rel you know related to Ebony, but also you know you know my own personal opinions, and I can kind of you know walk that line a little bit, but I can also ask questions. You know, I can also say, hey, who do you want to be on? The, you know, who, who who are you more interested on the cover? You know, are you more interested in Usher or um, are you more interested in Jay Z? Ebony 
magazine and ebony.com and ebony's tumblr and you know pinterest and um and uh you know instagrams you know all every all the places where ebony lives and breathes serve to um not just advocate for the readership um which is what we do you know not just advocate for the readership but also to offer an authentic um reflection of what African Americans are thinking about and you don't get that everywhere you just don't get the kind of journalistic integrity and ability to to hear what um, what is really happening in the black community really almost anywhere else especially because this is an African American owned company and so there's nothing diluting the message I mean, it's really just the message which is so important and so crucial um, and I think even more necessary now as we try to figure out how to, frankly, heal this country from some of the rifts that, that have been illuminated in the past four years. Um, you know, so you know, it is just a tremendous honor, again, you know, to be able to touch this iconic brand, to be able to reframe this iconic brand, um, and again, to be able to talk to you know, my 10 million readers in a way that is authentic and real and to advocate for their needs and to entertain and to engage and also to be the face of this iconic brand. I mean, the whole thing is um, a blast for me.